So the X-Men First Class trailer came out just a few days ago, and I saw it. Now, I'm not in the dark. I know about this movie, and I'm excited for it, or was excited for it. And some might be wondering, why haven't you talked about this? You're usually right on top of stuff like this, so where are you? And I saw it. It's not like I didn't see it, but honestly, this is not the X-Men film I want to see. Some people are ecstatic and excited. Other people are iffy. Some people think it's going to suck, and this trailer hasn't done anything to improve. I'm kind of torn in the middle. This this is not the X-Men film I want to see, but at the same time, this is a film that's guaranteed to go in a new new direction and play with certain new characters and maybe go a new route with the tone and uh, look of the film, obviously, set in a new era. But it's just not what I want. And I hate the fact that it's called First Class, and it's totally totally screwed up the continuity and i'm not being a huge geek like that's not like the comics listen if you're gonna call a film x-men first class and you don't have the core mutants of the team like cyclops or Jean gray and i totally get why they're not doing it because it doesn't fit with the continuity but still they butchered those characters on screen please redeem them especially cyclops he can be such a cool character if he's given the right amount of attention and done in the right way but that aside i know i'm sorry that's just how i feel about that but about the trailer itself um it looks promising you know i love that it's set in the 60s and that it, it, it tackles uh xavier and magneto before their xavier and magneto that's a cool concept but I really don't care that much. I don't. The only person I really care about seeing before he was who he was is Magneto. That's why I love the idea of an X-Men Origins Magneto picture, because you can have an uber-serious film, get a great cast together, new mutants, uh, have Michael Fassbender play Magneto, who is fantastic in the trailer, by the way. The, the one thing I got from the trailer more than anything else is that Michael Fassbender will be a fantastic Eric Lencher, and I'm sure he'll he'll do the role justice. James McAvoy could go either way, but I still think, for, based off of the trailer, is doing a nice job filling in the shoes of Charles Xavier, left by Patrick Stewart. I, I think he can do it. Uh, a young version of him. He can do it. But getting back to what I was saying... I would have much rather seen an X-Men Origins Magneto picture because his origin story is pro arguably the most interesting origin out of any character in the X-Men universe. And also, he's arguably the most interesting character in the X-Men universe. He, he grew up uh, in World War II when Nazis were around, he grew up as a Jew who was separated from his family, he grew up in a Nazi internment camp, and then escaped and went on a killing spree, killing Nazis, and, and uh, lost his family at a very early age, met, uh, professor, met Xavier when he was a young man, and Xavier helped him cope with all of this anger and frustration and pain that he had in his life. That is some serious characterization that you could definitely play around on film with. You have the serious tone of World War II and, and Nazis, and you have an action scene. You have a revenge story. You probably have a love story because they can play around with uh, Magneto falling in love and having his children, uh, the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. But that's probably a video I should be doing all on its own because I can go on, on and on about why that's a film that should be made on its own merit. But this movie in particular... I'm interested to see it, and I'm not talking about it that much because I really don't care. I don't. Uh, some of the mutants look cool, like Azazel, who's Nightcrawler's dad, is in this movie. And, you know, that's cool, but I don't care about Azazel. I care about Nightcrawler, and he can't even be in this movie, even if, even if we wanted him to be, because continuity, that makes absolutely no sense for him to be in the movie. So, we're going to get Azazel. Maybe he'll be interesting, maybe not. We don't know, because all we saw is him using his powers. Uh, some other mutants, like uh, uh, Beast, which I was very, very excited to see at first, and I'm hoping will still be pretty badass and cool. But uh, there's a quick two-second glimpse of Beast in the film, and in the trailer, and I really, 
really hope that is not the version they stick with because if this is a prequel to number three, X-Men The Last Stand, which some fans hate, I don't buy it. How the hell do you go from uh, a creature that looks like a reject from where the wild things are to a more human-looking Kelsey Grammer beast when he's all grown up? I don't get that. I don't get that evolution. I know that beast in certain comics, especially in the Ultimate Universe, he looks more cat-like, but it, a film adaptation, there's certain things that do not work on the comic page that translate onto film. Because a person can use their imagination to justify certain deci creative decisions that people made on on page. But when you're seeing it on film, that's someone's vision being force-fed to you. And there's not a lot of room to really interpret it because it's already been viewed a certain way, it's presented a certain way, so there's not a lot of middle ground you can play around with, you know, give your own reasoning for this, for why decisions are made the way they are. But uh, I don't like the way Beast looks. He looks too cat-like. It doesn't look right. And I know, you know, it's a mutant movie, you know, it's a, it's fiction, whatever, but I don't care. I, I really don't like the way Beast looks. I, I wish they would have just stuck with that Kelsey Grammer look, making him look kind of more humanish. I'm not saying to have the whole thing done in makeup, but you can use CG, but come on. He looks like... He looks just like a giant cat with blue fur, and I know they've done that, but it just looks silly on film, and I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong, because I love Beast very much. He's one of my favorite X-Men, if not my favorite, and I really want to see him done well, and especially when he has the chance to actually play a bigger part in this movie than he did in X-Men 3, which was uh, one of the reasons why I was disappointed with that movie. Uh... What are some other th other things? Uh, they showed a brief glimpse of Mystique, who I'm sure will be great. The Hellfire Club, as I've said before, will probably be interesting. Uh, January Jones is Emma Frost. She'll she'll be hot and she'll probably have a few ass kicking scenes. But there's not much to say. Uh, I honestly I I did not expect the trailer to be kind of slow paced the way it was. I was expecting this trailer to be more grand and epic and this you may have seen you may think you know the world but you don't know anything you don't know where these people have come from this is a much bigger world than what you think you know that's the type of vibe I think I, I thought I was gonna get with this trailer but it's nothing like that really and they're playing around a lot with the Cuban Missile Crisis and making it a lot of a period piece and that's cool but that's not the vibe I was expecting to get I, I wanted to see more of Xavier Magneto, like, going all over the world and uh, realizing that this is, this is not something that is small, like, in one country. This is something that you travel all over the world for and help people with. And maybe they'll do that, but the trailer does not make that clear. And I'd like to see that. Um... The one, the best thing I can say about the trailer, honestly, is Michael Fassbender. I can totally buy him as a young Eric Lyncher. He definitely has that uh, anger, that uh, assertiveness that we would expect from the character. That you can see that evolution into Ian McKellen's Magneto, the older, uh, bitter, determined Magneto in the in the three films. I can easily see that evolution based off of the few short seconds I've seen of Michael Fassbender. He's badass as a young guy, he's angry, he's bitter, and I can totally buy that this guy is just gets so fed up with how people are being treated that he goes off onto his own. I love that, and I can totally buy that based off of Michael Fassbender's performance, which I know, I'm calling it right now, is going to be the best performance of the movie, and it's going to be the thing that people remember. Uh, I loved. I did love the yellow and blue costumes in in the X Jet. Uh, that was a nice throwback to the original costumes in the comics. But uh, again, it's it's a bit of a you know hit and miss with me because you know you have the original costumes, but you s screwed around with the continuity so much that it's unrecognizable now. You, there's just nothing recognizable about these characters other than their names, and it's X Men. 
it's a different type of X-Men, it's a different X-Universe, but you're paying homage to the comics with the yellow and blue costumes, but the first class in the comics couldn't be any more different than the first class we're going to get on film. So it's a little weird seeing that tribute in the trailer and on the film when this is so different. But I'm sure that's a fanboy nit nitpick detail thing, but that was a little weird for me. But I do love seeing the costumes. That is cool. And I think the black leather is getting pretty old, and it's nice to see something new. Um, did get a few uh, quick glimpse at a prototype of Cerebro. That was pretty cool. I did like that. Uh, it did look a bit silly and uh, jonky. Um, but, you know, it's uh, if you're going to make something that's that big and that can do something that powerful uh, for, that allows Xavier to reach out to every mutant in the world, yeah, it's going to look a little wonky, especially in the 60s when computers were as big as buildings. So it doesn't bother me that it looks, like, odd and, and glowy and, and how it looked in the trailer. I thought it looked cool. And it fits the context of the story and the style. And yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. But anyway, just to sum up, this movie, we're going to get some cool mutants. We're going to get uh, guaranteed to get a new uh, take and a new flavor uh, for this story and these characters, which I'm interested in. But I'm not uber ecstatic like some other films. I I'm not anxiously waiting to see this like Green Lantern or Thor or even Captain America. This is the least anticipated in my mind because it could still go either way. I really want it to succeed. I really want it to do well. But again, I'm not too invested into this film because it's not the X-Men film I want to see. And we've seen this formula before, you know? Action movie. Throw as many mutants in there as you can. We're probably going to get some people that have been thrown in there just for fanfare, and they can't figure out a good reason why in the story why they're there, other than it'll make the fans happy. That'll prob we'll probably have a couple mutants like that. Um, it's just we've seen this again and again and again. I really want something new, something different. The X-Men films almost have a formula to their own now, because we've seen it so many times. Five times now. Uh, I, I hope the Wolverine, coming out next year, will break that formula and give us something completely new. I mean, this is pretty new. But <clears throat> I want to see a movie based off an X-Men character that goes in a completely different route than what we're used to seeing on film with these characters. I want something to break, not maybe not break the continuity, but that would be nice. But gives us a new edge and a new completely new style which this film seems to be going in that direction giving us a new flavor but I want a film to just completely play around with a character's backstory and play around with the possibilities because the possibilities are endless with these characters because there's so many characters with great origin stories intricate details in their past that you can easily have a spin-off movie with with one or two characters. That's why I'm disappointed that they're not doing it with, with Magneto, because I think uh, maybe more than Wolverine, he would have a very interesting solo, solo movie. But that's up for debate. Those are my thoughts. Uh, if you agree or disagree, leave your comments below and explain why or why not. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you're ecstatic for this movie, uh, that's great. If you're not, tell me why. Uh... I'm interested to see the movie. Uh, is, is my interest peaked? No, it's about the same, but it's not down any. I'm not expecting this movie to be a bomb, but I'm not expecting a huge, memorable movie either. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong on all counts, and this movie is spectacular. But films that really blow them out of the water are few and far between. But um, films are finally starting to get it right with these characters, and it's l very nice to be in the golden age of comic book movies because now we're finally getting quality films that pay homage to the comics and this character's history, but still give a great film experience that it's the, that it's the best of both worlds. And it's really wonderful time. It's a wonderful time to be a comic fan and to just geek out left and right, left and right, over all these different characters and franchises. It's so great. So, hope this film does well. Let me know what you think. I'm Silver Lightsaber. I'll talk to you later.